So on guys, welcome back. Uh, last video I posted was a short little video of me kind of uh, changing plans with this car. Since then, uh, I've got the uh, 8.8 that I was going to use out sitting on the ground. The other one is still sitting here. Now I've just uh, pulled off the drum brake assembly, went ahead and swapped over for the disc brake brackets. That way those are on. Uh, springs are out. You get down here real quick. I've already taken that spring out and installed the Caltrax bracket up front. That's sitting up there, ready to go. The other spring here is sitting on the ground. I've got to go ahead and still pull this bushing out so I can install that bracket over there, get it back in the car. Uh, also went ahead and cut the old brake line bracket off the back. We're not going to be using that anymore. I've got this Willwood proportion valve that I'm going to be installing in the back. I cut the bracket off the floor, kind of made a bracket, drilled some holes so I can sandwich the floor pan, bolt that up. Then this guy here will slide over those studs. We're going to use these two bolts here to kind of help space it off. That way I have room to adjust the valve. So I'm going to go ahead and get that installed first since I got everything out of the way. Then I'll jump on the spring down here. We'll get that bushing out and uh, press in the new one from the Caltrax bars, the traction bars. Get all that set up. Get it back in the car. Get the springs hanging. And then we'll install our rear end, so let's get to it. guys okay so we got our valve installed up there it's out of the way that way we don't have to worry about doing that after we put the uh, rear end after we put the housing in that's ready to go all I got to do after that is just put the line up over the housing plumb it into our brake calipers and then hook it up to our proportion valve over there and as you can see our bushing is out now this is an aftermarket bushing I put in a couple years ago if you have you still have the factory pushing in your leaf springs on the 67 it's going to be much more difficult to get out and basically what i did was when i got the old ones out is you take like a drill bit because you're going to have the sleeve here for the bolt and then the bushing that goes around in here i took a drill bit and just drilled out the rubber around until it became looser and just stepping up the drill bit size till it got loose eventually i was able to pound the old one out and get this one in that's how I got the old one out. If you still have the uh, old bushing in there, it's gonna be a little bit harder. But now that we got that out, out of the way, our Caltrax system comes with, there you guys here. This guy's replacement for the bushing, and that helps stiffen up the front of the spring since our bar is gonna be pivoting off this guy here. So now what we need to do is we need to get this guy pressed into there. Now, like I said, I've already got the other one done. And I do have a wall press. So you guys can see it's over there next to my uh, air compressor. 
I do have that. I realize though too, some of you, some of you out there, if you're doing this, don't have a uh, air compressor or <laughs> my bad, a press next to an air compressor, but uh, you can use a hammer to put it in. You just don't want to use your hammer and beat directly onto the pad because you could damage this, you could mushroom that, and it needs to be the correct size. This guy, because you got this steel sleeve that goes in there. This has to go inside there. And of course, this has to pivot, and there is very like little to no play. So if you hit this directly, it'll mushroom this little end here. And it won't be hard to do because this is made of aluminum. So I'm going to leave the leaf spring sitting on the ground there. I have a, of course, you guys have seen me use before. I have this little aluminum plate. I'm also going to use a 2x4. So we'll go ahead and I'll get this set up. We'll do, we'll do it in, uh, we'll do it in real time. And uh, get it pressed in, get it ready to put in the car. All right. Put my gloves on. Got any dust. Get that kind of set up there. Tap the outside edge. And get it started. Sure she's going in. She's going in. Nice and even. Yep. Yeah, not damaging anything, making sure her still goes in nice and easy. Still got a little bit farther to go. Perfect. See you guys, that didn't take, see that didn't take long at all. It's actually quite simple. I think the hammer made more noise or the wood made more noise than I was actually hitting it or as hard as I was actually hitting it. Now, you don't have to do that. Some of you might have a buddy or, or even a local shop that has a press, probably a couple bucks I'll press it in for you. Just saying you can do that. If you uh, live out in the country like I do, it takes about 45 minutes to get to any other shop. But as you can see, didn't take all that much effort. We got the, the bushing pressed in. Now that that's in, our kit comes with this grease here. I'm going to go ahead and coat this little bar. With that grease, kind of be generous with it. Because it does, it's not serviceable unless, you, of course, you pull the spring back apart, lower the spring, pull the bracket. So we're going to make sure it's got plenty of grease in there. I like to put it up. This is what I did on the other one is I put it on the bar, ran it in, rotated it around, make sure there's plenty of grease in there. Pull the bar back out. Then you can, whew. Now you haven't watched it. Then take the grease back off, smear it back around up inside there, run it back through, pushing grease throughout the bushing, rotating it, make sure it's all the way around. Did that a couple times till it stopped pushing grease or very little grease out the other end. I mean, that's what I did on the other side. And you'll feel it, it feels Feels pretty good. Go ahead and pull this bar back out. Grab a paper towel here real quick. All right. So now the next step, once we got that, 
all greased up. Take some of the grease here too, go around the outside of this bushing. That'll help keep from premature, prematurely wearing out that bushing. Because your brackets, the next thing to go on, like I said, be generous. Got that guy out. This guy here goes on the bottom, of course. You can see this little guy here is got it's gonna ride right up inside here. So helps if you put it on the right way. But, so you slide this bracket over real quick, line those holes up. So now our bar right in there and it helps locate this bracket and of course in case you're wondering because our old bushing has this lip here you can see the lip of that is about the same width as the thickness of this bracket here I don't know if you can see that on camera but it eliminates that this inner aluminum bushing is flush with the spring then this little sleeve in here is the exact width of the pocket where the spring sits. And then of course everything rides on this on the inside of this guy here. So now, but now that we got that installed on our spring, go ahead and get it set up in the car. And get ready for uh, get ready to install our rear housing. is finally in the car as you guys saw we installed the spring we got the uh, rear housing slid up into place put the u-bolts got it all bolted up went ahead and installed the caltrax bars as well uh put the diff cover on or sealed and put the diff cover on rear end is now full of fluid also got the brake lines plumbed in my wife which is over here in the corner where is she there she is Help me bleed them. As you guys saw, I hooked up the uh, the vacuum on the rear calipers there. Drew the fluid to the rear calipers. Now, they're not 100% bled. I will have to do that. But for right now, they got fluid going to the calipers and the brakes do work. I just need to get some more fluid and then finish. Just bleed the whole system. That way I know everything's good to go. Uh, kind of give you guys a little close-up shot of the cow tracks and how it sits in the spring purchase here as you can see it sits right up inside the original mounts and all this pivots on that bar that you saw we slid in so it's tied up against that bar this pivots the spring pivots 
Now the other side is adjusted. And what they tell you to do is when you get the car sitting on its own weight, and it is, I actually have the rear end and everything sitting on jack stands right now. So the car is under its own weight. So you can see there's a little air gap underneath there. They tell you to go ahead and adjust. Bring that pin all the way down to the leaf spring till it touches. Once it touches, go ahead and adjust this bar here a quarter of an inch or a quarter turn I mean once it's got its quarter turn in and the preload set on those bars like I said the other side's already done we're good to go now I gotta do is tighten up the jam nuts on this put the uh, rear wheel on the car that way we can get it on the ground but uh, we are not going on any test drives tonight it is late and it is cold but before I put the wheel on, I wanted to get underneath the car as well. Kind of show you guys how everything sits with it all bolted. And uh, come on in. We'll come on back. So here's the tail shaft, the transmission. Follow it all the way down. As you can see, it is not that far off. Like I said before, in case any of you guys haven't seen any of the other videos. In action, in all actuality it's only an inch and a half off center but this is where my old dry shaft hoop used to sit i went ahead and cut that off both sides flush i plan on redoing it as you can see the clearance between the flange and the floor is actually pretty good if you come all the way up into here you can see about a little over two fingers it should probably work out if you're the only one driving if you've got air shocks in here you can always install air shocks to stiffen it up there it is again just so you guys know it's sitting on its own weight but everything clears this is our new drive shaft installed we had got a replacement rear flange and the new yoke up front here for the transmission but everything is installed now in case any of you guys have missed any of the or the last couple videos my original plan was to install an 88 in this car without narrowing it now you hear a lot of people say you have to narrow it now do, do they say that you have to narrow it because the drive shaft's going to be a little off center, maybe. Uh, as you guys see, it's not that far off. I'm sure if you went on a went off a big bump or loaded the car down with people, that drive shaft may touch the floor. Now you can either clearance the floor, massage it a little bit with a hammer to give you a little bit more room. Uh, if you're more comfortable, you can cut the floor and kind of. Replace a piece of sheet metal in there to give you a little more clearance if you're more comfortable with that. But I'm not sure if that is the only reason why they say you have to narrow the rear end. So in the next video or so, we're going to get this car on the ground. We're going to get and we're going to take it on a test drive. We're going to take it around town and we're going to function test to see what kind of problems you would run into with the 8.8 without narrowing. And that was my first goal with this rear end after we figured all that out and kind of uh, figured out little fixes here and there on what you could do we we're going to pull the rear end back out but as you guys can see now here's the old 88 that i had in the car we went ahead and pulled it back out because i came across well another 88 that had the purchase already welded So that was actually going to save me a lot of work. So once we figured out all the little issues with the uh, run of the car without narrowing the 8.8, we're going to pull that one back out. We're going to cut this one up. We are going to narrow it the uh, two and it's two and seven eighths off the driver's side. That way we have to use both or two passenger side axles in this. That'll bring the pinion centered with the tunnel on the car which is roughly about inch and seven sixteenths, inch and a half. Bring that over center. 
that allow then uh, allow me to get a different offset on the wheels, figure out different tire combinations, and whether or not I have to mini tub this car to fit a 28105 in there, which is what I want to do. Most likely going to have to mini tub it, but baby steps. But before all that, like I said, we're going to get this car on the ground. We're going to figure out what kind of issues we run into without narrowing an 88. Have fun with it for a little bit. Work on that rear end while we're playing with the car. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to end this video right here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this sheds a lot of light on some of you guys with questions about doing this to your car. Uh, hope it helps you. But, uh... Thank you guys for watching, subscribing, hanging out. Greatly appreciated. Uh, again, if you are new though, hit that subscribe button for me. Don't forget to turn on notifications. I am planning on doing another giveaway, probably around the 1500 subscriber mark. Like I said, I'm doing all this to help you guys as much as you help me building this channel. And just have, I just wanna have fun with this. Again, I appreciate all you guys for hanging out and watching. And I'll catch you on the next one.